What's up everyone, welcome to this video where we learn how to integrate emojis in Flutter. Oh, and in the previous one, we made some important changes to the chat screen in the way that we are showing messages. Although this video can also be considered as a standalone video. So if you're new and just happen to stumble upon this video, you can follow along as well. And yeah, if you're new, then please consider subscribing to the channel. So let's get started. Before talking about emojis, let me just quickly make some minor fixes. Currently, if I send a message to some user, the message is listed at the very top of the screen or the list, which is not what we want. So I'll go over to the message list widget and come inside of this list view dot builder, which is responsible for building the list of messages we see on the screen and set the reverse property to true. After hot reloading, you can see that the list reverses. And now if I send a message, it's listed at the very bottom. Okay, so this works. And now when I send a new message from some other device that is displayed here as well. Now, what if we wanted to scroll to the bottom of the list programmatically when a new message arrived? For that, we would have to use a scroll controller. So I'll start off by providing a controller to this list view by writing controller list scroll controller. Then at the very top of this file, I'll write scroll controller, list scroll controller, scroll controller. Then I'll come back to where we were. And just above this list view dot builder, I'll start writing scheduler binding dot instance dot add post frame callback. So what just happened? Well, we created a post frame callback, which is essentially a callback that is called after a frame is rendered and it's called exactly once in its lifetime. But if you make some changes to the UI, then the frame is rendered once again and this callback is called again. Now, instead of this callback, I want to execute code to scroll at the very bottom of the list. So I'll write list scroll controller dot animate to list scroll controller dot position to get its position, then set it to dot min scroll extinct to move to the very bottom of the list. If you wanted to reverse this behavior, you would use max scroll extinct. And there's another method called move to, which can be used to scroll to whichever portion you would like in a list. Then I'll specify a duration and set the curve to curves dot ease out. All right, so before hot reloading, I'll scroll to the very top of the list. And as soon as I hot reload, the UI state changes and the callback is executed, making the list scroll to the very bottom. Again, if I scroll to the top of this list and type something, the list scrolls back to bottom. This happens as we are using set state on every keystroke. The same callback and action will also take place if suppose you are reading some earlier messages and a new message arrives. You'll be scrolled to the very bottom of the list. Although this seems cool, but it could drive someone crazy if they were reading some earlier messages and new messages kept on arriving. So it would be better if I just comment it out for now. All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about. And it's time for us to move on to integrating emojis. First, I'll include the necessary library. Now, there are several different libraries which can be used for this purpose. We'll be using Emoji Picker. And as of now, its latest version is 0.1.0. The way we want to do this is by adding another widget just below the text field called emoji container and toggle its presence based on the visibility state of the keyboard. In order to keep track of emoji container, I'll create a boolean variable called show emoji picker and set it to false by default. So like I said, I'll search for chat controls and create a condition using ternary operators that if show emoji picker is true, we'll show a widget called emoji container inside of another container or else we'll just display an empty container. Then I'll create an emoji container and it will return emoji picker. This comes from the library that we just imported. Now we get multiple options over here. I'll be making use of necessary ones for this project such as BG color and I'll set it to separator color then indicator color which is going to be set to universal variables dot blue color then I'll set rows to three and columns to seven. This basically determines the number of cells on the emoji grid. Okay, so I'll lay out the complete logic just in a minute 
But first, I would like to talk to you about an issue. Currently, the face icon, which is going to be responsible for toggling the visibility of emoji container, is provided to a text field using suffix icon. But this creates a problem because the default behavior of text field widgets are such that whenever you tap on the suffix icon, the entire text field acquires focus. Now, this might be normal and useful in most cases, but in this one particularly, it's useless to us because we want the keyboard to go away when that smiley is tapped. But the catch is, whenever we tap that button, it further triggers the text field to gain focus and thus launches the keyboard yet again. I tried several approaches to solve that problem, but everything seemed quite buggy. So I changed the way we are laying out the whole text field and suffix icon. So instead of passing the icons.face icon as a suffix icon, I would rather group the text field and icon instead of a stack. Alright, so click on this bulb icon and then wrap it with a stack. Then I write children and put the text field inside children list and pass it as a second child in this list of widgets. Now this shall work fine, although it would create a little bit of issue with the padding. So it would be better if we replace this entire gesture detector with another widget called icon button and then pass icons.face as the icon for icon button. Also set highlight color and splash color to transparent. Great. Now let's talk about how it will work. So here the user can essentially do just two things. First, either they can tap on the smiley button or they could tap on the keyboard at any time. And by keyboard, I mean they could tap on the text field at any time. So here's a sort of pseudocode of how the things should work on either case. So if you pick the first case, let's say the user just taps on the smiley button. Then also there could be two different cases. First, uh, when the user taps on the smiley button and the emoji picker is already visible. In that case, we would have to hide the emoji picker and make the keyboard visible. In other words, when the emoji picker is visible and smiley button is tapped, the text field gains focus and the emoji picker goes away. Similarly, the other condition in this scenario would be that suppose if someone tapped the smiley button when the emoji picker was hidden. In this case, we'll make sure that the emoji picker becomes visible and the keyboard becomes hidden, which means that text field loses focus. And then there's another condition that what would happen if the user directly clicked on the text field? Well, at that moment, we'll drop everything and make sure that emoji container is well hidden. We don't care about the keyboard because that would obviously become visible since the user has tapped the text field. All right, so I hope I made that clear. If you still have doubts, it'll all be solved in just a few seconds. By the way, by hiding the keyboard, I meant unfocusing the text field like I mentioned earlier. And that can be done using focus nodes. So I'll declare one right over here, just like this, and initialize it as well. After that, we'll assign it to our text field by targeting its focus node property. Now, let's start by making some very essential methods, such as show keyboard, which will return text field focus dot request focus. Another one is going to be hide keyboard, which will return text field focus dot unfocus. After that, the other one would be hide emoji container, which will only contain a set state method. And we'll set show emoji picker to false. Similarly, we'll have another one called show emoji picker, and it will set show emoji picker to true. Now, if you look at the pseudocode, the first step says when the smiley button is tapped. So it basically means that we need to come inside of the on pressed method of recently created icon button and check whether or not the emoji picker is visible. If it is not visible, then we would like to show emoji container and hide the keyboard or else we would like to hide emoji container and show keyboard. Simple. The third condition is triggered when the text field is tapped. So go over to the text field and it provides us with a callback called on tap, which is going to be appropriate in this scenario. And on tap will return hide emoji container. That's it. Now let's test it. So first I'll tap on the field to reveal the keyboard. Then I'll tap on this icon and there we go. 
This works just as we wanted it to. Now we need a way to send these emojis or smileys. So I'll come over to emoji container and we'll use a callback called on emoji selected, which returns with an emoji and a category for that emoji. The way we are showing the send button is using a variable called is writing. So if is writing is true, the send button is shown or else it is left hidden. And that's the key. So just inside of this function, I'll write set state, set is writing to true. And just below it, I'll also write text field controller dot text equal text field controller dot text plus emoji dot emoji. This emoji is what returns the selected emoji. And we are just appending that to current text in our text field. In fact, since I mentioned that this video can also act as a standalone video for emoji picker dependency, so I'd like to talk more about it in details. Currently, we have made use of BG color, indicator color, rows, column, and on emoji selected. Now, every emoji is represented as emoji class, and every emoji has a name and a string called emoji. This emoji string is what contains the emoji symbol. And you can also retrieve the category to which any selected emoji belongs to. I'm not quite able to understand the recents tab over here. For example, when I use an emoji for this complete collection, I don't get to see anything in the recents. But when I use a property called recommended keyword, which is used to recommend an emoji to the user, and it accepts a list of string, and it expects different sorts of emoji categories. So I'll write something like face, happy, party, sad. I'll also set the number of recommendations to 50. Now, when I hot reload the app, we'll get to see a search icon and a lot of emojis. And when I use the emojis from this collection, it's listed in the recent tab quite nicely, just the way we'd expect it to be. So that's something I was not quite able to understand. All right, so it's time for us to send an emoji. So I'll select some more emojis, tap on the blue button, and there we go. By the way, most keyboards come with an emoji container integrated, so you might not need to use an external dependency every time, but it's still a really useful thing to know about. And with that, I would like to wrap up this video. In the next one, we'll start with sending images to different users. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, then tell me about it in the comments below. You can find the code related to this video linked in the description below. Also, if you're new and enjoyed this video, then check out more videos on my channel and you won't be disappointed. Finally, hit that subscribe button to receive updates on more awesome videos on Flutter. So, see you next time.